Hey, it's John Linz, and in this video, I'll be discussing the AdaGrad Optimizer for Gradient Descent for use in applications such as machine learning, deep learning, etc. So where is its place on the Gradient Descent Optimizer tree, I like to call it? As you can see, on the left, we have gradient-based optimizers such as Momentum, and on the right, we have learning rate-based optimizers such as AdaGrad. And it's important to note that there's actually many optimizers that are built off of AdaGrad, such as RMS Prop or Ada Delta, and more. So what is the problem with vanilla gradient descent? The problem is that when you choose small learning rates, yes, they are less likely to overshoot, but they are more likely to convert at a non-optimal local minima, as you can see in this diagram. Where here, it's converging in this non-optimal local minimum but it should have converged here, the optimal local minimum. On the other hand, large learning rates converge much faster, but are also at the same time much more likely to overshoot, as you can see in this diagram, where it should have converged here, but it overshot, so it converged here instead. So the solution to this problem is to assign an individual learning rate to every parameter in the model. And this learning rate, it starts off as a large value, usually, and decreases over time as we get closer and closer to the optimal local minimum. At every iteration, the learning rate becomes the given learning rate divided by the magnitude of a vector, where every element in said vector contains the gradient of all the past iterations for a particular weight. We compute the magnitude by taking the square root of all of these elements squared and summing them up. So the concept behind this idea is that for each iteration, the cache value of the ith weight or ith parameter becomes the original value plus the ith element of the gradient squared. So essentially we are, we are adding on to the cache value and each value that we're adding on is the gradient element of a particular weight squared. The new ith parameter then becomes the original ith parameter minus the learning rate times the ith element of the gradient divided by the square root of the ith cache value plus some small positive number. And that small positive number is just used to prevent division by zero because of course that would cause a problem at runtime which we would not like. So what does that all mean in math terms? So essentially what we're doing is that we are constructing a gradient vector, and we have to do this regardless of what optimizer we're using. Every time we compute gradient descent, uh, we always have to construct a gradient vector, of course. So I'm sure you're familiar with this. The gradient vector um, is usually denoted by nabla, where nabla sub i is the partial derivative of the loss function with respect to the ith parameter or the ith weight. And of course, we have to evaluate it at the weight values. This essentially just tells you the slope. And uh, this was visually demonstrated in one of the previous slides. The next step is to assign a cache value to every parameter. And the reason we do this is because every parameter, when using learning rate-based optimizers, they all have their own learning rate associated with them rather than a single universal learning rate. So this cache value, it becomes the old cache value plus nabla sub i squared, where nabla sub i is the ith element of the gradient vector. And under these circumstances, the update equation now becomes the old parameter minus the learning rate divided by the square root of some small positive number to prevent division by zero plus cache sub i. And then, of course, we multiply that by nabla sub i. So to recap, remember, the intuition behind this idea is that the larger the past gradients of a certain weight value is, the smaller that weight's learning rate is going to be over time. And what that allows us to do is start off at a large learning rate and allow that learning rate to, uh, in most cases, decrease over time once it starts to approach that optimal local minimum. And here is the code implementation I created this using the C programming language, where essentially I have a function which I call train, and it's passing in uh, parameters which contain important information, such as the number of iterations and the learning rate, parameters, training data, etc. 
And what we're doing is that at each iteration, as you can see, we're, we are adding on the NABLA sub i squared. And then here is the update equation, where uh, in this case, I'm not using i, instead I'm using j, uh, where w at index j becomes that old value at index j minus the learning rate divided by, and of course, it's all the same. And then I also decided to print out the loss along the way. Uh, and um, I can run it as well. I'll put that on the screen. And that just shows uh, that, the, that the loss it decreases over time, and we get the expected values uh, once it's finished executing. Thank you so much for watching, and I uh, hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye.